and I haven't spoken to anyone this morning, so I feel like it's the first time I'm doing any talking today. So it's like I got to warm up. You want to do like some vocal warm ups, like la 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 screenwriter screenwriter writing things screenplays. Oh man, you're ready. You are ready to go. Let's do this. Uh, Hey, everybody. I am here with David L. Williams, well-known as one of the nicest guys on screenwriting Twitter, and he's also a newly professional screenwriter. He's had a hell of a 2022, which uh, culminated in landing on the 2022 blacklist, the real one, uh, with his amazing action spec, Clementine. Uh, So, Dave, thanks for doing this, man. Uh, Stoked to talk. Yeah, man. Thank you for for having me, dude. (laughs) For sure. Um, I think this is awesome. Is this your first uh, interview since landing on the blacklist? Uh, Yes. Yes, it is. (laughs) Number one. I bet there'll be more. So uh, awesome. Good stuff. Take that, Andy Compton. (laughs) Um, Yeah. I'm waiting okay. for the sequel with Andy. I'm waiting for the for the for the Redux, the the follow up. So, but great job, great on you, great job on you for for sliding in there. <laughs> you you got to move quick with these things, man. Um, so, can you give us like the two minute version of kind of like why you got into writing, what that pursuit was like, and how you ultimately broke in? Yeah, man. So I I got into writing. I, I was a fan of movies because of my grandfather already. Um, and I was already kind of writing. I I tried my hand at novels, uh, but I'm too lazy. I wrote a ton of poetry in high school. Um, wrote a bunch of short stories when I was a kid, <clears throat> and even drew like stick figure graphic novels. Nice. Uh, but it wasn't until I was working at Blockbuster, and rented and, and watched. Oh the man! Movie. Oh what, dude? <laughs> that's a, that's an amazing shirt, and I need that shirt I, immediately. But... Um, my old. <laughs> blockbuster manager who uh i now work at the same company with again all these years later um he gave me that a couple years ago um because uh just uh as an old nostalgia thing so shout out jay cody yeah yeah shout out to jay and and man if you can ship me one that'd be really appreciated but no all right i'll let him know (laughs) that'd be sick uh extra large by the way but uh yeah i was working at blockbuster i rented and watched blade runner and uh, something clicked. I'm a very visual guy, and I it, maybe it was the visuals, but something really clicked for me where the love for movies and, and the love for writing that I already had kind of did one of these. And it, it was almost like I I, I was enlightened to, to the fact that people had careers writing movies. I kind of couldn't believe it. I was like, are you serious? Is it viable? And it turns out it is. And I uh, fell in love with that that idea. My first ever script was a, a sequel to Blade Runner. It was a hot mess, <laughs> 160 pages. It's awesome. Written in a word, yeah, in a word doc. Page sequel to Blade Run. That's that's in, great. In a, in a word doc, man. Way back in like 07. Yeah. So. I, I started out in a word doc. I wrote my first two scripts like that. So yeah, yeah, hardcore. Uh that's how you know it's real. Um but yeah, man, fast forward, you know, did a ton of writing, leveling up, worked in the industry as like a PA on set, so I know that struggle. Uh, but I, you know, just kind of leveled up because of because of the friends I'd made um and went through different phases as a writer. And as far as breaking in, uh, I wrote Clementine in 2020, but kind of sat on it for a while because uh, a, a, a different script that some people might be familiar with called Bear Skull had some heat on it, and that kind of distracted me. Right. And then the the following year, I was kind of distracted by Intergalactic and Porter because they were doing things, and I barely shared it with anyone aside from two really really good friends. Uh, and then like, it, but until like like October or September of 2021, finally started sharing it. And I uh, got a really good response, and eventually it landed. It, it got a nine out of ten on the blacklist evaluation site, evaluate the eval portion of the site, um, which was kind of crazy. And some people had never even heard of a nine on the blacklist. And yeah, I mean, it doesn't and, happen uh, often. Yeah, through through some memes, through some people I met at AFF, people especially Roadmap, um, and you know, people were hitting me up on Twitter asking to read it, and. Um, yeah, that was that me. was how we connected, dude. Because like yeah. we, we kind of were following each other, but we never DM'd or anything. And then I saw you post about the nine, and like I just always kind of liked your vibe. So I was like, "Hey, can I read this?" And uh, that's how we connected. So yeah, man, thank you, thank you. I always appreciate that you you check it out for sure. I yeah, man. But like even managers hit me up in in the DMs and Twitter uh, when that was going down, and and uh, I was able to kind of parlay that into. Um, 
you know, quite a few meetings, like about a dozen meetings with different managers, half of which uh, for sure wanted to work together. But I met my amazing guy, Mitchell, at Gramercy Park, uh, signed with him. And and the moment, the real moment it happened for me was uh, uh, Feb- January, uh, there was an offer in for someone from someone to option it. And uh, that kicked off some some negotiations. And that was a really surreal time. And it, 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 it took months to actually hit me that it was getting picked up somewhere. Um, things were happening so fast. I started getting generals too, and and was already working on like a pilot with my with my manager. So it was like I I, I never had time to really process. I don't think it was until like I'm I'm serious you when I said like April. And, it. Yeah, yeah. I know. It wasn't really until like April and May where I was like, oh wait a minute, that this this is happening. Um, <laughs> it was like it was really happening. So yeah, that was kind of the moment in June. I signed with Verve. Um, I have an amazing team of agents, and I've just been. I've had about a uh, little little upwards of 80 uh, generals this year. That's insane. With some amazing people. And um, yeah, dude, really excited now with the blacklist, really excited to see what next year holds. All right, let's let's talk about that. So so I actually really want to hear like you talk about, you know, what it was like just finding out that you were on the blacklist. I'd love to do that, Nate. But first, I really think people should like and subscribe to your channel so they can see more cool videos like this one. So, like, it wasn't until like November-ish that, as, as as a matter of fact, I had a really really rough end of November, November, uh, end of October, November, where like I was really sick with bronchitis, and then like right as I was healing up from that, I got dragged into jury duty. Uh, it was just like for a murder trial. Right, it, was, you know, it was insane. <laughs> Um, I was like, I don't deserve this. But th- there was one evening, I forget why the thought came to me, where I was like, hey, wait a minute. Don't they announce the blacklist like like a few weeks from now? And then I was like, oh no, does Clementine have a chance? And I was just like, I don't need to be, I don't need to be obsessed with this. So luckily I'm I've been really distracted with like my projects and everything. But um, so like leading up to the blacklist, it's like, you know, I had really good friends of mine who were like hyping it up as like as a real possibility. But genuinely, and I've, and I've heard this is the case for other writers, you don't find out until you until it's announced, man. Like, I had no clue. Um, like, you know, Monday that, that Monday morning, I was just like, there's so much going on with, like, the public transportation because I don't have a car. And, and uh, it was just, like, really, it was a really stressful morning on top of anticipating the announcement that, like, I was trying to, like, kind of forget about. Uh, but basically, as far as, like, the moments leading up to it, it was it was a really crazy morning. Nine o'clock hit. I had to get away from my phone because I was just like, I, I cannot be in anticipation mode because uh, there's a real chance it's not on there, and, and it's totally understandable. You never know. I have no idea who's who's yeah. pushing it. You know who's voting. Uh, but yeah, man. It, when I got back from from taking a walk, a uh, very necessary walk, I came back and my phone was already ringing. I had three emails, uh, one of which was from my team. And uh, yeah, the, it, it was pretty clear as day that, that it, it, it got on there. And, and man, it was just an unbelievable feeling, dude. Like, it, it's basically outside of like getting a movie like made and, or like winning an Oscar. This is kind of like the pinnacle. This is kind of. This yeah, is I mean, the blacklist, it's special. It's it's an amazing honor. It's really. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. It's such a legacy. It's like it's so many great movies were. Blacklist scripts. It's right. So many. Yeah. Like wonder winners. Yeah, yeah, movies that made a ton of money, like actors, a list actors keep an eye on the blacklist. Like it was, it was, it was, it was stellar, man. I, I can't lie. And then just the influx of of emails and and congratulatory uh, messages from everyone was just crazy. Well, that's the other thing I wanted to ask. Like, what's this week been like? So it's Friday now, um, and this happened on Monday. So, what's the week been like since that news dropped? Well, dude, Monday and Tuesday were were crazy. There were a lot of people. Uh, I, I, so many people hit me up and it felt like a birthday times 10 man um notifications coming in from everywhere <laughs> facebook twitter uh messenger instagram people i haven't spoken to in years hitting me up uh industry execs that i've met like over the past year like at least a dozen of them have emailed me and i'm, I'm super thankful i literally just got an email from one like you know like uh, like 10 minutes ago um like uh people who had passed on clementine like managers that I spoke to like uh, a year or so ago. I had I had about two that hit me up and were like in and congratulated me. And it meant a lot to me because one, the fact that they even That's right. Jeff, Jeff hit you up. That's right. That's awesome. Yeah, Jeff hit me up and, and one other. Yeah, they they hit me up. Um and it was just so wild, man. Like 
I, I just really appreciated that they, of course, there's that moment of, haha, sucker, I told you, or that kind of thing. But it's also like, man, you remember me and you remembered that script and, and you yeah, saw it and you were able to pick it up, you know, out, out of a crowd and, and be like, oh, that's Dave. And that's really crazy to me. So shout out to those guys. But yeah, man, it's, um, my, my team has already updated my bio, you know, they're <laughs> when they sent my stuff out there. And, Hell yeah. Um, I was also just like really, cause I'm developing a pitch right now and I was reading a book in order to do so, but I just like, I was already in love with the project, but now, you know, I had that extra kind of inspiration of being like, holy shit, like I'm among, you know, the great up and coming screenplays and screenwriters in this industry. And I'm, I'm ready to attack this thing and act accordingly and try to be the best I could be and develop the best project that I can. And I was just so inspired. So it's just been a really inspiring week, if, if anything. And has it hit, have you thought about how many people are reading you right now? Like, I mean, cause like, yeah. if you think about it, like, so there's that Dropbox link that just goes around all the time and uh, yeah. thousands of people have downloaded that. And then that uh, tweet that the blacklist put out when they were live tweeting it did huge numbers. Even yeah. that fucking Reddit post that I put up there, like fifty thousand people saw that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so it's like, I mean, who? I I think the number is thousands of people reading your script, which, like, that doesn't happen. You know, people reading scripts for enjoyment purely, like, yeah. at that level, it doesn't ever ever happen. When you write a screenplay like maybe a few people read it for enjoyment, but most people are trying to make money off of it or like looking yeah. for something to make money off of, you know? Um, yeah. So that's incredible. Yeah. Most of the time when you're in emerge, when you're trying to emerge as a writer, people reading your stuff is like, they're doing you a favor. You know, exactly, I, I've reached yeah. a point where um, I think one of the first things you notice when you're on, when you're on the other side is like, it's no one's really doing you a favor when they read your stuff. It's really, <laughs> it's 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 for them it's it's for business it's uh for evaluation so yeah man it's, it, i have thought about like the amount of people it was already it was crazy already the amount of people even before we got repped it was crazy the amount of people that were reading clementine that's true i mean probably hundreds you know so yeah yeah well, like easily dozens like um and then you know once i signed with gramercy park now it's like you can multiply that by five once you sign with verb you can multiply that by 20 um and now the blacklist it's like this is the first time where the, the reads of Clementine are completely out of anyone's hands. They're not, right. <laughs> it's not up to me. It's not up to my agents, not up to the, my manager. Um, there's a link floating around and, and random people might be checking it out. So, and it's um, like the one that a lot of people are talking about too. Like, so people are talking about pure cause that's number one. Number one always gets read a ton. Right. And then there's a couple others, but like Clementine is in that conversation of like the three to five that everybody's talking about, which is insane. Um, yeah, so it's just I mean, the number of people reading it, it's just it's mind blowing. And so, so cool. Um, I could yeah, be happier crazy. for you, dude. Like, it, and it's so well deserved. It is such a good script. I mean, that, like, that's why cool. like I took to Twitter immediately after reading it. I didn't know you. And I was like, everybody needs to read this shit. Like, you know, because it's just <laughs> it's so good. Um, dude, so, so I, I love I love seeing that recognized in that way. And uh, couldn't happen to a nicer guy. So it's pretty cool, Stop. man. Stoked it's, for it's, you. I appreciate you so much, man. <laughs> oh, for sure. Um, so, you know, knowing that you're a blacklister um, and knowing, you know, a lot of the people who are going to be watching this, I would love to talk to you about how long you think it took to get your work to that level or at least to like a professional level. Um, you know, I'd love an yeah. honest answer, you know, so whether it's like a year or you've been at this like almost 15 now, right? Just about. Yeah. Just so about like, 15. You know, yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm very curious to hear about like how long you think it took you to get there. And also like, what did you do deliberately to get better? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I, I don't think that question gets, gets asked enough. Um, a lot of writers will sometimes they'll write a few things and be like, all right, I'm just waiting for my chance. I'm just waiting right. for someone to recognize my work and da, 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 da. And, and, um, you know, as as much confidence as I have in my in my writing ability, I don't I don't think I've ever felt that way. And it took me a long time to ever like get to that point. It took me like ten plus years, you know, if not more, to be like, oh, I know I'm ready. It's just a matter of you know when. So, uh, yeah, man, I started in you know that that blockbuster story I told was back in 2007, dude. Like I I had wrote yeah. my first book in 07. Um, then I transferred schools. I went to Brooklyn College to study screenwriting. So I ended up writing a couple more features. For school um and but once i was on my own man it, it was i wrote so much man i wrote like and i kind of break down my experience 
uh, my development into phases. I think I've had about five different phases. I went from like being a, an excited newbie that was writing complete garbage, um, but with some cool ideas for a couple of years. And then that transitioned into, oh, okay, I'm making some some fundamental mistakes. Let me clean yep. those up. Sounds you know, that second phase, uh, some, there's some fundamental issues. Okay, third phase, I need to really get into like developing really interesting characters and and now I got to up that kind of stuff and, and you know, really honing in on the dialogue. And then, you know, somewhere between third and fourth phase, it's like, now you figure out your voice. Once you start making fun characters, and it's like, who are you now? Now you can actually talk about who are so you. How many <laughs> years are you in now when you're kind of, you, you got these fundamentals and you're like, okay, now I really got to develop my voice as a writer. Yeah, I, I actually do remember that point. That was, that was such a critical point. Um, and I'll explain why, but that was like 2014. So we're talking seven years. Dude, it's crazy. That's like, I feel like that's me too. About seven years in is when I like yeah. felt like things were starting to click and I was getting it. And then eight years in is when I wrote the script that like, you know, got me some run. Uh, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's wild. Yeah. Um, And so like, I'm so glad that you're willing to share that honestly, because, you know, you are a blacklist writer now, like, like that's, it's the best of the best. Um. And, you know, I think people don't realize what it takes to get there. And so mm. for you to talk about spending 10 years just getting better, um, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's incredible, right? Like, it's almost a little insane uh, that anybody would stick with something without anything to show for it for that long, just to get better with the with that faith in themselves that they could do it, right? But you did it. And, yeah. and nobody can take away the fact that you are a blacklist writer. Like you have proven to everybody how good you are. And I, I just, I okay. love that. I think it's the coolest story. Yeah, man. It's, um, it's one of those things where, and it's very applicable to, to other, you know, crafts and professions. Like you, it, it I kept writing the primary reason I kept writing so much. I, there was a point where I wrote like 10 scripts in a year and I did that for like a oh, couple shit. of years. Really? I, I've written about That's insane. 40 something features um and wow. 50 like in total uh but i mean the real the real thing that that imbued all that was just like a, a obsession a love with the craft right. and i i think that's i think that's you know i'm sure there are different writers who who've risen in the ranks who they you know they love it you know but they're not maybe obsessed um they just happen to have like the innate ability to do it and they're kind of going with the flow i'm sure those people exist yeah, um, I'm not one of those people. I was just really, <laughs> I was just Me really either. like wired. I'm just wired so much to be writing. Um, I'm always itching to to get a story down. I just love the the feeling of typing the keys into a screenwriting software. Like it's 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 that it's that micro the 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 desire the passion for the craft. So you know when I realized I had that passion, then it be, then it became like well I, I had to like believe in myself. You know I had to start having that faith and and uh knowing that the more i keep writing the more opportunities i'll have um and and just to kind of go back to your other question of like you know the different phases like when did i know um it was probably like i was started getting like consistently good feedback let's say about 2015 2016 it was really at the beginning of 2017 uh where it like started to kind of hit and hit hard you know i started to get that like oh shit you know that wow uh, when you're when you're a writer, you're looking for that that like a genuine wow. Some people just say that because they, they, you know, people love hyping each other up. But like when you get the genuine, holy shit, yeah. what the fuck? Like, my whole day it's is different. completely it's ruined. different. Uh, yeah, it's it, 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 you you can tell, especially with people you trust. Right, you can tell. And I started getting that around 2017. Um, so we're talking like 10 years. That's the 10 year mark of writing. <laughs> and yep. then I had and then I found another phase within me when I wrote some uh, some fucking scripts in 2019. Uh, that I like have shared with like almost no one, but they were essential for me. And then 2020 happened where I wrote Bear Skull, Clementine, uh, Porter, and then you know the rest is history. And and you now write a little bit more slowly, right? Like you don't, you're not knocking out five, ten scripts a year anymore, right? Uh, no, I could probably like in a vacuum, I could. I'm somewhere between three and five. Um, but. You know, there's there are so many processes in this industry when it comes to like you know developing takes, pitching, meeting, um, meeting people, uh, talking to your your team about what's the best next move. 
Um, oh, that has been a lot of the stuff that slowed it down, but like for the better, like I'm not really complaining, honestly. Um, yep. I love everything that's been happening. So um, if, you know, yeah, if it were nice to is me, like, you it, could probably not write a script for the next year and a half and your reps yeah. aren't going to drop you because you just made the fucking blacklist. So, yeah. like, so that, yeah. like, I haven't finished a script this year. I've been trying so hard working on the same one in between all these rewrites I've been doing on the other projects and it's mm. kind of killing me. And I'm just like so thankful I had a movie made this year because I know yeah. it like buys me a little time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, generating material. By the way, it's, it's it it never ceases to make me so happy that you had a movie made this year. Oh, uh, thanks, dude. Uh, every time I'm reminded of that, I'm just like, yes. Um, so, just, but yeah, I, it's been fun to like become friends this year because, like, look, we started at Blockbuster around yeah. the same time, um, and you know, we both stuck with it because we had this kind of unhealthy obsession i guess um, yes. For that. Yes. <laughs> and like it took us a long time to get good but we did it and we both had a hell of a year and it's just it's really fun that we became friends and got to share that you know yeah that's really awesome fun. i love seeing people ascend you know and not like especially people that i'm a fan of whether they're you know personally or through their their talent and i have a, i have a, a good handful of friends in my life now, including you, um, that are just like, they're all ascending around the same time. And it's just, it's just incredible to, to watch. Yeah. It's um, cool. Yeah. It helps. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. nice too, because it's like, you know, when you, when you have friends who are winning, like their wins are almost as exciting as your own. And so yeah. like <laughs> that can be really helpful too, when like you're having some challenging times, but at least you can celebrate somebody else, you know? Yeah, man. I, I, when I'm not writing, but a friend is doing well, it's like, oh, thank God, I have something. Yeah, exactly. I have some action. There's some action, you know, like totally. And that, that stuff matters, man. Especially in this industry, uh, when you're busy like trying to develop takes, and you're kind of like, you're just tired of developing. Depending on what you're, what you, you know, if you're attacking OW, the OWAs or not, but, um, you know, everything is slow, man. You know, setting up meetings and stuff is slow and it might be a while before I can, before I can write my next feature. I know what it's going to be, but it's probably going to be like four or something months. And I'm blessed that yeah. I have friends that I can watch, you know, do like win contests and, or get repped or like, you know, our friend, our friend Nick is like, he has some heat on him. And, and I'm just so lucky that I, I have those things to kind of that, that like kind of become priority to kind of supplement, you know, uh, the time. So I'm totally. uh, very lucky to have, to have that. Yeah, it's great. Uh, I, I could not agree more with that sentiment. Um, you know, I think I, I feel like a lot of people share that too, who, who are successful, right? Like I, mm -hmm. I think there's a, a positivity among many people that I've met who've had some real success um, and an excitement for others. You know, it's not, it's, yeah. not, it's like the, uh, the selfish rat race that you might expect in a really competitive right. business. And that's, that's really cool. Um, and it, you know, it makes it much more enjoyable to be part of it. Um, so can you tell me about some of the things that have happened in your career since breaking in? Um, I know you have to be vague about some of those, um, but it'd be awesome to give people an idea of what this last year has been like, you know, yeah. um, from the point you kind of got heat from that blacklist nine, um, onward. Yeah, dude. So I, <clears throat> right after the nine, I, um, I connected with Mitchell from Gramercy Park, obviously, and I'd also connected with um, Julia Glossy, who who she used to be a media finance agent at CAA, uh, but now she works with Beck and Woods actually. Um, so, you know, she's the one. She was like a major. She was super integral in in, in getting the script uh, option because it was people that she knew really well that she shared it with. So, yeah. Ever since then, it was I would say between January and June, it was just. I'd written another pilot. I written, I'd written a pilot called Cybergun, um, right. and then and then uh, just a lot of meetings, man. Uh, and this is before Verve. It's just like I think I had about thirty something generals uh, over the span of that time, um, or like close to forty maybe. But uh, you know, and also th there were a couple of cases. I had a couple of opportunities to develop takes. Uh, there was there was this one production company that was trying to make a short. Uh, they had they already had a director attached. Now what's interesting is that you know I they loved my take. I broke through, um, you know through the break the bake off or what have you. Yeah. Uh, but then the deal kind of fell through. <laughs> so because for for you know I, I won't get into why, but 
Um, that's kind of how the industry can be. Like you can literally make it to the mountaintop and, and, you know, humans, it's still a human industry and things happen. So, so many things. That can happen. Yeah, I know. So um, there was that. And also a lot of execs, um, especially after I got signed with Verve, a lot of execs will like, they have projects that are kind of just sitting on the shelf or they have a, a graphic novel that they're really into or something. And they just kind of send me stuff. So I have like, I've had to organize, I've had, I have folders in my Google drive kind of just kind of packed with like these different projects that people have sent me that I'll, I'll get to eventually. Um, I promise. And, and stuff, some stuff, you know, I, I think what, what's, what's very interesting. And I spoke to um, some other friends about this, but uh, I know that a lot of aspiring writers can't fathom turning projects down. Um, like when you get an opportunity and someone says, Hey, yeah. we have this OWA or whatever, and we're looking for a writer and, you came up things are always first and foremost in your consideration um they want you to, to to consider it and there is power there is power in saying no um because if you're not if you're if you're not connecting to the to the concept of, to the project in any way your pitch is going to fail like on like on, without question like 99 percent of the time so that's a waste of time uh two even if you did win it it's it's like is that how good is that script going to be uh <laughs> So, and you might, you might, you might, you know, you might flub a relationship if you don't uh, generate a really good pro uh, product, you know? So, right. and, and also you just don't want to spend six months on something that you kind of like, you want to be able to, you want to do that with something you love. Time is limited, man. Yeah. Time is your, your greatest, like time management is another thing. Uh, you have to manage your time. Like I'm, I'm developing two pitches simultaneously right. and also trying to write a pilot right now. Um, time management email management organization and you're still working too. a day job as well right now yeah where also, you are right now. so thanks for yeah. thanks to uh your boss for letting that happen yeah yeah god bless uh cliff he's great man um yeah it's it's um yeah as far as like that but that's basically what's been going on this past year it's just like having those really cool conversations with execs from all over from small production companies all the way up to studios to like universal um i've had a couple conversations with them like Will Packard, um, Mandeville, all kinds of all kinds of places. Uh, Davis Entertainment, like, yeah, all, all really really cool places. I had a really amazing general meeting with Marvel that was like kind of mind blowing for me, and, so, and we really vibed. Um, now, granted, I can't talk about the projects we've discussed, obviously, but yeah, and I, yeah, so, but yeah, stuff like that, man. And lately, especially when I signed with Verve uh, with the agency, because their their priority is to generate income for you generate opportunities um so i've just been really fortunate to like chat with people about stuff that they might want to try and get made and try to get written and some stuff is on spec and some stuff is paid for sure and some stuff pays a little bit you know your team will let you know they they they'll they'll filter those kind of things out for you and it's just been a lot of really great conversations and developing pitches and, and then doing the actual pitches and um and trying to I, I think eventually what i'm going to do is try to make time just for writing the feature that i want to write um i think it's really important for writers to to make time for themselves um i know we all want to get yeah. established i think I that was, wanna, yeah sorry go ahead i i know we all want to get paid as soon as possible yeah. we all want to make it our full-time job immediately i think there's value in patience and, and waiting for that right project um and if and if you if you keep running into things that are kind of okay or keep getting passes on um it's it's for me it's time to start looking inward and start writing you my need, next thing you need to write specs um i really really believe that um you know that was a mistake i made the first time that i broke in where i really wasn't spending a lot of time on original stuff i was trying to chase mm -hmm. all this other stuff um and so now you know i've got i'm doing re a rewrite on aether which i'm almost done with i actually have to turn that in today it's such a busy day um <laughs> But, uh, I, you know, I'm almost done with that. But I asked for a little more time on it than I normally would have because I have to work on this spec of mine, too. I've got to, got to, got to get it out early next year. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, what I've been doing is just, you know, splitting my time between both daily. You know, so it's like I'm going to get an hour done on Aether and then I'm going to get an hour done on the new spec, you know, and like wow. just and it's uh, just and it's like you were talking about time management, but that's a lesson that I learned. Like you got to keep generating new material. It's because otherwise, like you don't have anything to put out there. And if things do dry up, like, what do you do? You know? Yeah. So, 
But hey, speaking of getting things made, like you were talking about a second ago, Clementine, I don't know how much you can talk about it, but it's, it's a little closer than it was a year ago or, you know, when it first got option. Um, yeah, it's uh, we've had a couple conversations with directors. Things haven't quite panned out. Um, in one case, the, the producers kind of had to pass on on a person um, because they wanted too many changes. But uh, yeah, it's a, like I said, it's a human business. We're waiting. We're literally waiting for humans to read the script. We don't know when that's going to be. <laughs> we don't know when that's going to happen. Uh, could take them weeks. Could take months. Um, so it's literally. I think the idea is that uh, there are a couple of major studios that are very interested in the project and want to pick it up uh but they're waiting for us to get it kind of packaged they're, they're waiting for us to kind of get that director thing kind of figured out maybe the actors too so um you know do your reps and the producers feel like this blacklist payment or placement will help uh move that forward i think they do especially the producers um i chat with them like on the day and they're they're just as, as excited as i am if not like somehow more um they are ecstatic about it and i think they are going to use that there there as a tool um it's it, it's the kind of thing that could move the needle you know like if if a director has like six scripts he or she is supposed to read and one of them is on the block blacklist right. suddenly that can that can move the Which needle that kind of thing can be, yeah especially if they hear other people talking about it it's almost like oh shit i gotta get to this before anybody else does just in case it's the yeah. one to do you know yeah, so, true that. Yeah, so it, 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 I, I do believe, especially from my conversations with uh, the producers, that it's the kind of thing that could move the needle uh, as far as getting reads happening sooner and more, more of them. All right. So if you want to know if that's going to happen or not, and you want to follow Dave, he's on Twitter, and you should follow him there because I'm sure uh, he'll be shouting out good news when he's able to. But uh, right. that, that's that's exciting, man. Um, I just couldn't be happier for you. Um, Thank you. So aside from the blacklist, what do you think has been like the most mind blowing thing uh, that you've experienced since you've broken in? Such a great question. Um, I think just how different everyone is, you know, um, every no two execs are the same. Sometimes they have to say the same things because those are the mandates that come down from the top. But um Every, just the different philosophies. Like I was talking to one exec who voted. He wasn't even prompted by my team to, to vote for Clementine on, on the blacklist. He just did it by on his own on his own accord. He did it by himself, which completely awesome. blew my mind. Which is the way it uh, should be, but uh, it's not that way all the time. So that's that really really cool. <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. It was it was incredible, and he he seemed really appreciative of my reps. I and I'm curious how many other people that what that's the case with actually. Um, but you know, he, he had his own philosophy of like how he found scripts. He had projects that he found on the blacklist that like did well, like, like, you know, on the evaluation site or right. like the, the contest and some execs, you know, whether it's because they're too busy or, or what have you, they don't, they don't kind of do that. They're much, they take a much more passive approach, you know, the good scripts will find them, that kind of thing. So, um, I'm always interested in just like how human everyone is everyone's just they're just trying to do a, a job you know um yeah. i kind of knew this already but um like i, I kind of empathize like I, I got it before i even broke in but you know speaking to execs um and, you know getting to, to chat with with dozens of them it's like they're just they're just people man they're just trying to get stuff made and, and uh they just want to meet creatives that inspire them and they want to try to inspire those creatives as well um i i think the one of the most eye-opening things i've talked about and i've spoken to this to in other interviews is just like i'm not surprised about like the necessity of pitching but just like the what the expectations are and um the things that help you that help give you the best chances and it's all about your vision your confidence um and your vision has to be clear as day has to be very distinct has mm -hmm. to be unique to you um all these things it seems like there's priority that's kind of there's like a premium place on that so that's been kind of a um, a learning experience. It's a completely different craft. Everyone knows it. Um, but yeah, so that's th those things, just like the different philosophies of different execs um, and also, you know, the pitching and all that stuff. It has been very eye-opening. I've been getting used to all those things a lot this year. That's, I mean, it, it's really cool to hear about that because like my year has been so different in terms of meetings and pitches. Like we haven't gone out wide with everything, with anything. You know, I've got, a movie made 
Um, but we went, my manager knew exactly who to take it to. And he was right. Uh, you know, yep. this guy too. Um, and, uh, you know, it went from there. So it never went out wide. And then uh, my other two projects, kind of the same thing, like, you know, it connected with those individual people. And so, you know, I haven't been taking a lot of meetings as a result of that. Um, haven't been pitching on anything. And that's been fine because I've been so busy anyway. Um, mm -hmm. But it's it's interesting to me to hear that. And I'm curious, like, based on the year that you've had, like, so you've been pitching on stuff um, and, you know, you've done some work on originals and, you know, you've got a spec that you want to write. Um, I'm assuming some of the stuff that you're, are you pitching any original material yet or are you pitching on assignment yeah. IP and stuff? Oh, it's been all assignment so far. I haven't yeah. pitched on anything uh, original yet. I might have an opportunity to do so with uh, Cyberland, which is super exciting. That's cool. There is a studio that's, that's interesting in, in, in hearing a pitch. So uh, what's cool is that the, the ball's kind of in my court. I can, I can take just as much time as I need to, to do that. So when the right. dust kind of settles with these, these, you know, these two pitches and my pilot, I, I'll, I might take a stab at that. Cause I, I, I just kind of owe it to myself uh, to, to do that. And I owe it to the script to, to give it a shot. So, yeah. but so well, far it's just been OWAs. So thinking about all those things and like speaking about, time management, which we've already, you know, it keeps coming up in this conversation. It's yeah. so important. Like what feels like the biggest bang for buck based on the experience that you've had so far this year? Oh, great question. As far as, as far as like, you know, doing stuff. Yeah. Like, so like taking meetings, you know, doing pitches, um, working on your specs, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. like what, you know, what seems like the best investment of time in terms of it might actually generate income, which is obviously, you know, it's maybe not the top priority for us, but it's important yeah. to keep doing this. Yeah, uh, I would say um, generating ideas, um, always having an idea to, to talk about. People are going to be, if they love your writing, they're going to want to know what's next. And um, ideally, you would have ran it by your team first and everyone's excited about it. Sure. Uh, but I think it's just so important to it's so important to always have that next thing kind of either in idea form or you're outlining it or even like a one pager. people will read what are called one pagers, which is like a, not necessarily a, a treatment or anything, sure. but it's like a, it's, it's almost like a very small 60 minute, like, pitch. like a snapshot, you know, like, yeah, kind of exactly. So people will read that. They, well, they that's what I was going to, I was going to ask you exactly that, I guess, is like, I was curious, you know, you, about when you're generating ideas. So you're not just, when you're not coming up with a log line or something, you're actually fleshing it out into a one pager so that you can flip it to somebody if they want to see something a little bit more. Yeah, it, it depends. So I I, had, I did that earlier in the year for a couple of things, mm -hmm. um, but I had more time to. Um, now sure. I'm kind of busy with like, you know, yeah, even a one pager actually takes a reasonable amount of time. You have to come up with, you know, some pretty critical character and story elements. Yeah, it also depends on if it's a priority for you at the time. And right now it's it's not necessarily so, uh, but I'll, I'll eventually I'll, I'll get back to it. But yeah, no, um, it, that, as a matter of fact, this, this kind of ties into your last question about the biggest surprises. Um, execs will read anything. <laughs> they will read a short, and I don't want to like, you know, I'm sure someone, some if my, my, if my agents or my manager heard that, they'd be like, Argh! But like, you know, most execs I've met, like they will read a short. I've I've shared a shorts with people. They will read a one pager. They will read an outline. Um, even if it's for like your original thing, it seems like a lot of people are just willing to, you know, they, they want to consume content. And yeah, I don't blame I mean, them. That's their, I've, that's their job. <laughs> I've heard they're open to, you know, even reading short stories and plays yeah. and things like that uh, way more than ever before. Um, so that's interesting to hear too. Um, but that's, I think that's a great comment, just the importance of generating ideas um, and having them available. And, you know, I mean, I've got, I, I do generate them, but I usually just generate a log line and then throw it in my like spreadsheet that I have for good movie ideas. And, and mm -hmm. I don't do much beyond that. And so I think that's a good thing for me to focus on is to maybe put together a few one pagers and just kind of have them ready to go for anybody who is interested, you know? And yeah, and also it's also really good to have like a like a fifteen to twenty second like not pitch, but just like a really super quick rundown of what the idea is. It's really good to have a, a really good idea of how to express and convey that concept in like twenty seconds. Um, and it doesn't have it's not formal. It's just for 
when you have generals, people are going to ask you nine out of ten times <laughs> what you're what you're working on or what your next project is going to be. Um, so it's just it's just good to kind of and you know the more generals you have, the more you get used to it, and it easier it becomes to like where you don't even think about it. But um, it is good to have those like really kind of like kind of snippety kind of things uh, to talk about like some some projects. Uh, so yeah, I I I, I can't stress enough the that's why people are get excited about you they get excited yeah. about your what, what's next and what your projects are that's why people get excited about anyone in this industry that's a creative because of yeah. what's next you know um so yeah it's always good to, to keep generating ideas and, that's and, great uh, material that's really solid um so um you know how about kind of similar question but like being on the other side of things now um this uh it kind of seems like a wall that you have to get over when you haven't broken in yet. And then you kind of realize when you're on the other side, it's not quite that way, but you are on the other side. What's caught you completely off guard and just surprised you the most. I would say, and it's been a really pleasant thing too, is just the amount of, just the amount of respect people have for, (laughs) for, what you do like for the writing when they you know when they love your writing um when when people are speaking are championing you and and speak highly of you uh there's just this immense amount of really great respect that people just have across the board for what you do and um and i'm sure it's also kind of infectious i'm sure it's contagious and people are you know when your agent it's like when when people really love this particular agent and that agent is like speaking extremely highly of you chances are they're going to, they're going to walk in expecting to like you, which is amazing, which is what you need to happen. But I just really appreciate just how kind and, and just like, like people don't never have a shortage of really good things to say about you when they like your writing. Awesome. Um, I've just, I've just been so pleasantly, um, people like, like when you, and I, and I say that, I say that relative to how it feels when you, when you didn't break in, when it feels like people are just like, they dread reading your stuff and, and uh, they're looking for excuses to, to get rid of your script or get rid of you. And, and you kind of have to, you, you have to pay money or do something to get people to get, to even get read. Uh, when you're on the other side, it's like the, the people that you've been trying to talk to your, your whole, your whole life or your, you know, throughout your um, journey, like they want to talk to you. Like it's, it's not, they're not doing you a favor. It's, you're doing yeah. each other a favor. I, and- it's, <laughs> cool to hear you say that and my experience has been different or very sorry my experience has been really similar um for a lot of the same reasons it's like before you break in it almost feels like it's like you against hollywood in a way right and i, th- I think yeah. a lot of that gets perpetuated in um that kind of pre-broken in writer culture yeah. where it's like you know the gatekeepers and execs will do this <laughs> and they'll throw out your script because of this and like nobody cares and they'll change it and blah 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 right mm-hmm. and um you know ever since i've kind of like and i experienced actually some bad stuff i guess the first time i broke in although certainly not all of it was bad um Mm -hmm. but like since i've broken in this time almost all my experiences with people have been really fantastic you know and it's like i walked on a set and kind of expecting like maybe people wouldn't want me to be there because i was the writer Mm -hmm. and like you know and just kind of that you get this impression from you know hearing people say stuff that that you're not wanted and it couldn't have been further from the truth. I mean, like I would just go up and introduce myself to people and I was continually surprised, like how stoked they were to meet me. And I was like, awesome. I'm stoked to meet you. You're working on my movie. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yes. Um, mutual stokeness is. Yeah, exactly. It was really cool. Is. You know, and it didn't matter whether it was like, you know, um, somebody in like the a crew department or it, it was an actor or the director or whatever like everybody was just you know super cool um and uh that's been the way it's been on the other projects i've been working on too and it, yeah it's been it's been neat man um and very encouraging you know it, it's um yeah because you want to work in a good environment you want to work with people you like and so it's nice everyone to- does yeah <laughs> so, it, it's cool. also uh if i can say really quickly also um all the i think you brought up a really great point about, about like the gatekeeping kind of diatribe, you know, um, oh, people only want you for this, or like if you don't do this by page, half a page on your first page, someone's gonna pee on your script, or that kind of thing. Totally. Um, so like 
I mean, everyone is just so busy, you know, everyone is so, and they want to be busy. They're like, I talked to some guy recently who was on like two different sets back to back. I, that, you know, how exhausting that is. And then they come back and it's like, and if your script is like merely okay, I mean, that person's, t- they're exhausted. <laughs> you know? And then they're reading, they're hoping, they're hoping to God that your script is great and that it's hard to put down and that it kind of yes. reinvigorates them. Um, so it's, it's just, it's a, it's a, you know, all that stuff is, is all that perceive, all that perception is just a byproduct of like, you know, the lifestyle that these people have to live, execs that's have a, to live when they're doing their job. That's a good thing too. Is like, I, I will admit guilt to this, like before I broke in too, you kind of have this impression, like when you're trying to break in and you're trying to get your script in the hands of these people that like, all they do is read scripts or whatever, which is like, no, that's 5% <laughs> of their job at most. Yeah. Like yeah. you're like the reps out there are repping their clients. They're very busy, like generating work for their clients and working with their clients. Yeah. The producers out there are producing movies and some of them are on sets for 12, 14 hours a day. And like, yeah. if they read your script, it's when they're like flying home for a day and a half on the weekend and like seeing their family. So, you know, it, it's really easy to forget about that type of thing. Um, and I've become much, much more forgiving about read times. Uh, you know, since <laughs> yeah, kind of realizing about it. Yeah, exactly. We're like, you know, going out to actors, like it takes forever to hear back. And I used to be like, that's so fucking stupid. Like, you know, the, what are they doing? No, man, they're like, they're working their asses off. <laughs> they're acting. They're probably acting somewhere. <laughs> that's what's yeah. happening. So no, I, I I get it, you know, and it's it's I think it's a good realization to have. Um, yeah. So I mean, I know that you had an amazing year. Have you had any down moments this year? Oh, I mean, you know, the typical passes. I mean, I, I bet there. I, I can I can say for a fact that there are people who didn't even take a general with me because they Clementine just didn't just didn't jive you know which, um, which happens too right like yeah. you know you can land on the blacklist but it's just not gonna it's not gonna work for everybody and that's okay so yeah and and you know what's great is that that's kind of what you're that's one of the things that your team does they kind of they kind of field you they shelter you away from that kind of rejection sure. um i'd say the the only the only time I, I it's been mostly a very positive year and also like my needs are very low i'm very low maintenance I've been I've been happy ever since I got the nine on the blacklist email the website last, since last year. Like I'm I'm in a, good, a really good place. There was one time um, where I had developed this like written pitch for adapting this book, and the producers, the execs, really really loved my take. Like it was probably one of the best responses, if not the best response I'd gotten to a take um one of um the whole year like they even like they looked at me in my face and said dude you know what's genius about like this is genius they use the g word and i made i updated my take based on their notes i like i took their notes and i developed i even developed the pitch even further um and then they passed <laughs> i get the uh... call the, the agency called me up and you know there's two agents on, on the line and, and they passed um and i was just like man um you know one thing you learn when you're pitching is that you people have to fall in love with your ideas and generally speaking if they don't really know what they want um you kind of have to blow their minds you kind of have to enlighten them you kind of have to you almost have to like educate them even if they brought the project to you and told you what they wanted you still kind of have to educate them on what they really 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 want so that was one where it like it like actually sucked for like half a day i was like what the they said it was genius. <laughs> it was like, so, but that was the only time I could think of. Otherwise, it's been yep. Yes, I've been passed on the majority of my pitches, um, but it is you know it is what it is. I, I I'm used to that. I'm, I'm okay with that. But that was the one time where it like kind of actually sucked. So, but otherwise, I've been good. Um, been good. <laughs> um, is is there anything about like navigating the professional side of writing that you just had no idea about before breaking in and you were like, Oh, I got to figure this out quickly. Um, other than pitching it, I, that's something, um, I don't know because I think one thing I've learned is that, uh, 
people the, the expectations that people will have when you're when you're discussing a project um there are some some things you kind of have to like some boxes you kind of have to check uh like character arcs people expect expect to hear about character arcs sure um they expect to hear about themes they expect to hear about why you um how you connect with with the story you know even though they, again even though they brought it to you they're they're still kind of hoping that you can explain how you connect to it um those are things i feel like i've had to i feel like i've gotten a lot better at you know because like practice like you have to practice pitching to get really good at it you know um yeah. those are things that i've like you know whenever i get step into a project those are not prerequisites those are things that i'm those are priorities you know my priority is figuring out a, a good story that i can then pitch but then after that it's like all right. I know. I'm, I know that, especially when I do a, a practice run with my team, they're going to be like, "All right, do you have this? Do you have this?" So it's just really good to kind of know going into any assignments or anything like that what you need to touch on when you are you're talking to people about a, an idea. So has that changed your writing process at all in the last year? You know, it's funny. It it has and it hasn't. So I'll say that it has because the only reason that it has is because um i know that whenever i get notes from my manager those are going to be things that he talks about so there's kind of almost no getting around them <laughs> in a way it's like right 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 i know he's going to talk about character arc and you know some themes and stuff like that um but i would say in general no it hasn't changed my process much it hasn't changed why i get excited for stories it hasn't changed the stories I want to tell. Um, it's just I'm a little bit more aware of what people are going to want out of a script um, and whether or not that is going to make the script better. Who knows whether or not I'm going to be doing that, and you know, whether I'm going to adapt in a way and try to apply those things into every script. I think after I get more established, probably not. I'm going to do what I want. Um, but for now, just because I'm, I'm trying to please everyone and and uh, because they're all looking out for me, so <laughs> and they want to please me as well. So I think for now it's like, oh, I can I can try and figure that out, and if so my manager feels that much more comfortable, yeah, sending it to the agents, and then they feel that much more comfortable sending it out wide. You know, it, I want to increase the odds. So for now, it's it kind of has, but in yeah. general, I think long term, uh, no. I'm in a similar place where my writing process on on the current spec is different, which might be part of why it's taking so long. Mm. Um, because, you know, this is the first spec that I'm doing with my manager. And I kind of want to like trust, you know, um, his process and try that out first. And, and you know, before I make any judgments, exactly. with it, you know what exactly. I mean? That's um, exactly and that. We're yeah. working together. It's a collaboration. It's a partnership. Um, I do think that it's finally shaping up into something I'm really excited about. The first act, I feel like is rock solid. Um, so that's good, uh, but it's taken a long time to get there just because it's different than you know how I normally approach things. And similar to you, I kind of see myself maybe not doing it exactly like that in the future, but I, I want to like follow through on this one that way. Um, and then we'll take it out and see what happens. And then, you yeah. know, that'll kind of probably impact how I approach things down the road. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, what would you say is the number one thing that writers should know before going pro that nobody ever talks about? Uh, just be ready to do a ton of free stuff, man. You you kind of have to. You're gonna have to do a lot of convincing people to uh, <laughs> to give you, not necessarily give you opportunities, but to just when you get opportunities to then like develop a take and or pitch on something. Um, it's it's a lot of work it takes like I, you have to read you, you'll have to read books you'll have to you, you know we have to read books for zero dollars you'll have to put together one pages for zero dollars you'll have to put right. together pitches for zero dollars <laughs> like so uh just be prepared to just make sure that you enjoy the process though and that's why it's also important to do things that you love um because you're not getting paid for that time so right. then it's just a grind yeah yeah it, it is a grind for sure <laughs> Yeah. And it's weird. It's like, I find doing writing that I don't want to do like to be so much worse than doing like a day job task that I don't want to do. And I don't know why that is, um, mm -hmm. but like, it's just like, it, it sucks, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. I mean, it really is important to, 
be working on things that excite you. There's no question about that. So it's so important. That's like the, um, and also you have to, you really have to humble yourself. You have to have some humility. Do not, I mean, sure, you can think that you're a great writer and you probably should have that confidence, uh, but just be ready for people to leg sweep you and, <laughs> and you know, just like, and just stay strong. If you have, if, especially if you're repped at that point, I'm assuming like, you know, once people kind of transition that they, they have a team of some sort, uh, just remember that those people believe in you and it's it's so important to to not take any of that stuff for granted just that's why i always appreciate my 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 agents my manager um it, yeah so just like just, i was already kind of humble like I, I was already kind of i always i always kind of had the humility factor um before kind of breaking in and just because i you know i've been writing for so long it's like like it'd be absurd if i was a dick but um it's just really important i think for you to be open to rejection and and really honest notes and being told that you need to change this yeah. um be open to all that kind of stuff yeah you have to be um but i love that you know there's a blacklist writer on here uh, <laughs> talking about humility i think that's that's fantastic um and it and also in combined with self-confidence and i think that's the key and i think that's something that doesn't get talked about that often um like i know i'm a good writer um like I, you know, when I write something good now, like I, I can tell, and that's different than it ever was for like, uh, you know, almost the entire time that I've been writing. Like, you know, I finished up a, the final rewrite of the of the, the continuum earlier this year, and I sent it to my manager before sending it to the producers and directors, and like I was like, you can read this if you want, but I know it's good. <laughs> and, he, <laughs> and he got back to me, and he's like, yeah, it's good. But also, like, I did three rewrites for those producers and directors, right? Because, like, they had some really fucking great notes. And um, I just recorded an, another episode um, of this thing today where I was saying, like, I really think that their notes made the script 20% better. And mm. it was already a silver medalist in page, which has, like, 9,000 entries or whatever. Yeah. But they made it better. Those notes were fantastic. And I read scripts all the time from pro writers who I know are better than I am. And like, I'm like, oh, that's something that I can learn. That's something I can get better at, you know? Yeah. And um, so, you know, I don't, you know, you don't want to be cocky, but I do think it is good to have self-confidence and know when you're ready and know when you're there, but always be open to learning and, and always be open to the fact that you might not be right about something. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I think, I think the confidence it is being able to take critique and you know take notes and and have a sit down conversation with your team when your team goes uh no more of this you know that kind of thing or we're, we're going to stop pushing this out for reasons you know um confidence means that you can take those things in stride continue to put in put forth great work because you know the people who are giving you that feedback they care about you you know they they care about right. your work they care about you it's it's everything that comes from your team especially is from love you know so um that's that's what real confidence is is being able to take those things on the chin and and keep grinding love that dude that's that's great um you are giving a lot of gold here i think people are gonna <laughs> eat this one up um cool. what do you want to talk about or shout out before we wrap up here i just want to shout out i'd love to shout out all my friends uh Good. jason nick joe you both Andy's, um, my friend Scott Basie, Rebecca, everyone, all the people from from Twitter. Uh, just, I'm just so appreciative of everyone's like love and and um, you know the the blacklist thing doing the numbers that it did is just crazy to me. And and even my team, who a lot of them they they're not even on Twitter. They were you know privy to that, so that was really cool. And everyone who's reading all the stuff, you know, like so many people reading Clementine and and like even turning that into reading other stuff and um just i'm just really 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 grateful for for everyone man i i it never gets old uh for me at least i'm never gonna get used to it and so i will always be thankful for for everyone's love and uh it's just so important that people keep writing man keep generating ideas and generating material it's so important uh because that's that's your value you know yeah. um in this industry you're not everyone is creative um <laughs> 
and not everyone is is a great writer or even a writer at all and people will count on you to be the creative to to be the writer um people will have nuggets of ideas or they'll have fully fleshed out visions and will still come to you to make sense of it so um just you know just keep doing that just just keep generating stuff and and uh getting getting your voice out there hell yeah dude that's great um well all right so one final thing um so you know how i've been doing uh those free reads and notes on twitter once a month right yeah so i'm gonna keep doing those in 2023 but i decided i'm gonna do it on here on youtube um just to mix it up a little bit uh plus i don't know if i'm gonna stick around on twitter or not and I was thinking I'd drop this video on January 1st and do the first one then. Um, what are the chances that I can rope you into reading a script in January as well? <laughs> hey, man, it's possible, dude. I think one of my pitches will be done sometime in January and I'll have some more uh, so if you free have a, time. If you have a month to read the script. Do you think you could read somebody's script and give them notes on it? You know what? Maybe. I can probably swing that, dude. Honestly, yeah. All right. <laughs> so Blacklist Writer is going to give somebody <laughs> notes. Um, do we do the same one or do we each pick a different one? Oh, see that, that I feel like should be your call. Um, I like both options equally. Um, that I might make that one your call. It might be more fun if it's the same. I was thinking um, that too. Let's do the same yeah. one. All right. Um, so how do we pick it? Do we um, like just choose a random comment on this video or like give a small challenge that they have to answer in the comments? Man, um, well, first of all, I think it should be on different platforms. It should be on YouTube, but also Twitter and maybe something. Well, like, we'll, like we'll let people know about this on Twitter, but they got to okay, come to the video. Oh, perfect. Okay, perfect. Comment. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I mean, um, damn. That's, a gr that's so great. I love this so much. Um, I guess just like comment and yeah, whichever one I think we we maybe a little log line even we do um, all right so log line we could we could do log line yeah we could and also just like tell us how long you've been writing i think okay. that's a very that that is one that i'd love to, to add that parameter so um yeah okay so log drop line, your log line. line in the comments tell us yeah. how long you've been writing yes and dave and i are going to pick a script to read and give notes on um and you know for me it's whatever but dave is a blacklist writer um so that's a big deal so uh you're producer writer that. <laughs> and oh thanks dude uh but uh do that and uh we'll see what you got um so that's all i've got for you dude um uh, this has been absolutely amazing i cannot wait to share this with people i think uh they're gonna absolutely love this it's gonna so, be great yeah i'm really excited i mean i'm excited for the script thing too now so yeah bring it on cool. <laughs> I, thanks for being a uh, game for it i think that's really cool i think it'd be a lot of fun to do it so um thanks dude uh and i'm sure i will uh catch up with you sometime soon yes sir we'll talk Hey everyone, it's Nate here, and as we said, we are going to do a set of notes for one of you for free. So just a few things about that. First of all, comment below with your log line and how long you've been writing, just like we said. One comment each, please, and don't submit for anything that's over 120 pages. 120 pages is kind of the high end of industry standard, and that's the max that we're going to read. Also, please don't submit your first draft. Getting a read from someone like Dave is actually a pretty huge deal, and you want to put your best foot forward. You know, we don't expect perfect scripts, especially not if you're submitting for notes, but you definitely want to submit something that you've really put some work into. On that note, notes are going to be supportive. They're going to be intended to help you improve as much as possible, but they are going to be honest. So if you're not ready for critical feedback, probably don't submit for this one. We've got a lot going on, so it could take us a few weeks to get to it, but we will try and get these done by the end of January. Finally, in your comment, show Dave a little appreciation and love. Uh, he just spent an hour of his time dropping absolute gold and share something that you learned from this. Make your comment by January 3rd, 2023, 11.59 p.m. PST, and we will select the winner the next day. Thanks, everyone. Go make some art.